I think it's about time we get some music playing in the Nova. In this video, we're going to be going over some wiring work that we're doing in the car, starting with the center console. When we had the Nova up in Pigeon Forge, we realized that gauges weren't working. The only one that was working was oil pressure because it's a mechanical gauge that gets pressure from the oil line. So we've been working on that. The bulbs were lighting, but the gauges weren't working. So if you look over here on the table, we've had wiring diagrams. We've been studying everything, trying to get it all figured out. And we think what happened was we were missing one of the ground wires going to one of the gauges back here in the back and then running to a ground in the car. Uh, we were in a rush there trying to get the car to Pigeon Forge and it's just something that we probably overlooked. So we got a new ground wire hooked up. It's hooked to one of the posts for the gauges and it's on a post where another ground wire was touching it. So that connection will be going together. And then we ran it to ground to the body of the car. And when we did a little test turn of the key with the battery hooked up, we did have the voltage meter working. We, it's showing a charge, so we think the gauges are now working. We won't know for sure until we crank it to check the fuel gauge and the temperature to get the engine warmed up, but we are going to have to replace the temperature sending unit on the engine. Temperature sending unit is right there on our engine passenger side, and as you can see, it's one of the posts that has a slide-on connector. It's just sticking straight out from the sending unit. We discovered that type of sending unit is not for a temperature gauge, it's just for the temperature warning light in the dash. The way that one works is it only registers when the engine temperature reaches its hot levels where it's kind of dangerously running hot, and that sends a signal to light the light in the dash. But we don't just want to light a light in the dash, we want to get the temperature range. So we're going to have to get the proper sending unit, which we've actually got on order, so we're just waiting to get it installed. It might have already arrived actually, so we'll, uh, we'll work on getting that installed. But it's a unit that actually registers a range of temperature inside the unit itself, and it sends that signal to the gauge so that the needle will move and register the temperature in the engine instead of just flashing one temperature to let you know, hey, your car's overheating. So we'll get that fixed. Some other wiring that we've got to check is actually the bulb for the tack. It's not lighting up when all the other bulbs in the dash and the console are lit. It's either a bad bulb or a bad wire connection or something in that particular gauge. But we got to pull the dash out to get to that and check it. And we're not really looking forward to doing all of that, but it's something we've got to do. And speaking of lights, I do want to show you a little change I made to the under dash courtesy lights when you open the doors. They were originally incandescent bulbs. They give off this like yellowish kind of tint light uh, under the dash. So we made a quick little change. I ended up ordering some blue LED lights to just kind of give a little more personalized experience in the car when the doors open. So you can see now when you open the door, you have that bluish tint light lighting up the footwells down there. I think that looks really good. Just another little personal touch to go with Stitch since we have this incredible blue paint and color on the car. So really like the way that kind of just lights up the footwells with that blue LED light. Want to take a quick minute to show off this awesome shirt that I ordered. I uh, got a set for my entire family. Check out Funky Thumb Designs on Instagram. They actually went through the process of doing this design for me. It's the Nova silhouette with stitch across the bottom for the name of the car. I think it looks incredibly awesome. It's got the channel logo on the back, the shield logo, and the blue with the black just looks absolutely fantastic on this heathered gray shirt. So thank you Funky Thumb Designs for helping me get this shirt designed and getting them shipped out so that I can share this with my family. I sincerely appreciate the work that you did to help get this done. Another item that we are working on while we're doing all this wiring is actually the kick panel speakers. We decided to not go with the factory 
speaker up here in the dash and instead we're going with the speakers and kick panels and you can see there we have the driver side installed with the speaker grill on the kick panel and i'm really liking the way this looks i'm super excited about getting the stereo speaker set up for the front of the car just like we have in the back of the car so you have that really just kind of all around sound we just have to get the passenger side speaker installed and we were actually working on getting that done but ran into a bit of an issue with the wires themselves it may not be the wires themselves but the way the wires are ran which is kind of our fault the wires are actually a little too short when you put the speaker in you put it in this hole right here. It just kind of sits back in the hole like this. But the mounting points for the wires are going to be on the bottom. I ran these wires the length thinking that it would be done on the top of the speaker. But when you do that, the mounting points actually end up going up behind this lip here. And right behind that lip, is a flat panel that fills that gap in so you can't really get the wires onto the hooks so they actually have to run to the bottom and be attached to the bottom of the speaker so we're going to have to lengthen these wires get them to where they can come down to the bottom and go up onto those points on the speaker Front speakers are officially installed, which means we now have a full stereo setup front and back. We have the two speakers here in the kick panels and then the two speakers that are back there behind the rear seats. You can see them, the speaker grills right there. So now I think it's time to just test it, make sure the radio works and see how it sounds. Of course, we won't be leaving it on too long because copyright. Well, can't leave it on for more than a few seconds. Don't want any copyright strikes, but I think you just heard it right there. Sounds pretty good. I went ahead and balanced everything on the sides. We got the left to right, front to back balance pretty good. So it sounds really even everywhere in the car. So that's the radio. Make sure you're subscribed so you see our next video when we talk about the issues we've had with the lights and the gauges for the dash and how we got those resolved. In the meantime, check out this video right here to find out how we ran all of these wires for the car. Thanks for watching this video. For now, this is Southpaw Garage signing out.